Hi folks and welcome back to Fisherman Den. Well today I'm going to show you how a match works. Now, it could be a club match or it could be an open match. They're all pretty much the same. Um, I'm going to go through the whole process from start to finish so you can see exactly what you have to do if you decide to go match fishing. The thing we have to do is we do the draw and as you can see we've got a bag with uh, little balls in it with numbers on. Number eight. Where's the You're quite a long way up, mate. We're up the damn wall. Right, let's draw myself one. Room. Let's see if I can find one. We're on the damn wall. I've got yep. number four. Yeah. So you'll also find that there's a, a sheet where you have to record your name and your peg number, or you get someone to do it for you in this case. So what happens now is that uh, this is my peg, as I just showed you. Um, along the bank there, there will be um, pegs on each of the positions along the, the bank. And they'll be numbered in this case from about 1 to 10, because that's all we've got in the way of the club today. So I'll just walk along to peg 4, plonk my stuff there and get set up. So I've arrived at my peg. Looks quite nice. And as you can see, normally on a commercial fishery, the pegs would have um, pegging that was permanent on it. This one, because we don't fish it all that often, we put our own pegs in and as you can see I'm now at number four. So that corresponds with the ball I drew out and that's where I'll be fishing for the next few uh, hours. Uh, just so you can see the water level does seem to be up and you should be able to see that I've got to actually wade out a bit because there's a wall out there. I think the water level's kind of high. Um, so normally you wouldn't have to do this, there'd usually be a platform down around about here and there wouldn't be a wall out there obviously. And so uh, today is a bit unusual, I'll, I'll take a platform out and sit on the end of it and it looks like a really nice little swim. You're going to have plenty of time to get set up. Uh, on this particular match we've got uh, an hour and a half. Um, on some matches you might only get an hour but they will tell you that beforehand. Now you're allowed to set up all your kit. As you can see you can put your keep net in, you can um, set up as many rigs as you want, you can have um, let's say a, a waggler rod, a feeder rod if you want to. Um, you can set up your pole pot. The only stipulation is you can only have one of them in the water at any one time. So we're now just waiting for the, the whistle to go, which should be any time now. Sometimes it's not a whistle, sometimes it's a collection, klaxon rather, and sometimes people just shout all in. Now in this case the, the guy <laughs> and as I was trying to speak, that was the klaxon going off. And it turns out what I thought was going to be down to my left is going off up there. Uh, you've probably also heard one or two people shout all in. That's really just in case. If you've got a long match length, then sometimes uh, people don't hear it. So it just goes down the line shouting all in. So that said, let's get in. And just before we start, I should also mention that before the whistle, you are allowed to plumb the depth with all your rigs. You're just not allowed to put any bait in whatsoever. Nothing. Otherwise you will get disqualified. Okay, let's get this rig out then. You've got everything out in front of you out this way. And obviously you've got people to your left and right. So the rule of thumb is that he goes no more than halfway towards you, and you go no more than halfway towards him. If you do get a fish on, and it decides to be a big fish and you're, you're taking it all over the place, then if it does run into him swim, basically try not to let it, but if you can't avoid it, just tell him that there's a fish coming his way and he's to be aware of it. Quite often the guys will reel in for you or just um, have a look to see where the fish is so that they can decide whether they need to or not. Now, matches these days are normally five or six hours. Um, or commercials quite often they do seem to be mostly six but again they will tell you beforehand um, so you'll know exactly what to expect. In our case today we're fishing from nine o'clock until three o'clock and of course at the end at three o'clock the whistle or the klaxon will go again and that's the end of the match and we have to do the weigh-in. Now I should say at this point that um, the rules and regulations that I'm telling you about here and now are the sort of the general standardised rules and regulations for most fisheries. Having said that, commercial fisheries in England often impose their own specific rules and regulations, things like governing hook lengths and whether you can tap the, the water with your pole or slap with your rig or whatever. Um, 
there's usually a board uh, to tell you exactly what's what, or if not, just ask the organiser what the specific rules are. Obviously, I can't give you every rule going because they all vary so much. So the guy next to me has just caught a fish, and of course he'll put that into his keep net. Um, again, there are specific rules on keep nets. Um, depending on the fishery, fishery you're at, in some places, if you're really going to bag up, you may need two, three, four, or even five keep nets. But mostly, one or two will do. Again, the venue um, owner or the organiser will tell you how many fish or how much weight you're allowed in any one net at any time. And I see a guy down the end there's caught a fish as well, so looking good so far. Now all I've got to do is get a bite. Okay, five minutes in, got a bite. Lads around me have already been catching. Uh, some of them have had two already, and they're only smallish fish. Uh, I don't think this is of any real size. Maybe, possibly a pound. Haven't seen it yet, but uh, see how we go. But the thing about fishing matches is that look around you all the time. See what other people are doing. Um, if you can see what baits they're using as well, and any tactics that might be of use to you, make the, make use of them. It's all about gathering intelligence, so you can catch more fish yourself. Yeah, it's only a very small fish. But we'll net him, because he's the first one. Okay. <laughs> so it was nice to get the first one in the net. It's probably not even a pound, this one. Somewhere close, but not... Uh, all that big at all. Right. Get back out there. So this next one isn't necessarily a regulation or a rule as such, but the thing about matches is um, you've got six hours. So not only have you got the normal three dimensions of distance, depth and side to side, you've also got the dimension of time. So, don't go throwing in bait all over the place at the start. The idea is to maximise the, the swim. So, for example, in this case today I'm starting with a, uh, a pole. It may be that later I go out on the method feeder, but I've also got a waggler rod. But I'm not going to be feeding all of those swims all at once. Um, there's no point, and it just uh, reduces your catches overall. Of course, how you go about it on the day will depend on the venue and the conditions and the type of fish you're catching and also your own experience. So that being the case, just learn as you go, watch other people, as you see Mark's got another one in there, watch other people and you'll soon pick it up. Oh, second fish and it's uh, obviously somewhat bigger than the first one. Right over there. Mark's still catching, he's had three and just lost one, so again, as I say, keep your eye on what's going on around you, because it may be that you can do whatever you're doing a little bit better by copying what other people are doing. You can ask them what bait they're using, but uh, they're quite within their rights to tell you um, to, to go away, um, and they can also lie to you, so be a little bit careful about that. If it's your mate, it's not so bad, but in an open match, they, they may or they may not tell you. Right. Some more better fish, as I said at the start. He swallowed it. Now something to bear in mind as well is it's a good idea to try and remember how many fish you caught or what weight you think you've got. Now in some places the fish could well be averaging a kilo so just count the fish and then you'll know where you're at by way of weight. Other places like this one the fish seem to vary in size so I'm kind of 
guessing that at the moment I've got probably three pounds of fish. Um, it's all relevant because you'll be watching the other people around you as well um, and just sort of checking on what they're doing and that way you can gauge are you doing as well, worse or, or better than they are. Keep the feed going in. Okay, just talking about how many fish you've got, you'd be surprised at the end of the match how uh, anglers around you will say, oh you've got 20 pound or you've got 50 pound and they probably are going to be quite accurate about it as well. So not only are they counting what they've got, they're trying to keep tabs on what you've got too. And as I say, some of them are really good at it. Now notice one or two fish surfacing out there. Um, you might be tempted to fish on the surface with bread. Now be aware that in quite a lot of matches any surface bait is banned. In other matches you can fish a surface bait on the hook but you can't actually feed surface bait so you can't be chucking little bits of bread out or dog biscuits or whatever. Well we're coming up to the end of the six hours now and uh, we're just waiting for the, the whistle to go or in our case the, the klaxon. Um, when it does you have to immediately pull your rig out don't be thinking you can leave it in for a few more seconds or a minute just because you think you might get a bite. It comes out straight away after the whistle. And the only thing you have to be aware of is that if you were already playing a fish before the whistle went, you are allowed about 10 or 15 minutes in order to fish to, to catch the fish I and mean, you can put it in your keep net. Um, I say 10 or 15 minutes because um, it varies from venue to venue, but you will be told that uh, or you'll be able to read that or indeed you can just ask one of the guys how long you get. But if you do have one on when the, the whistle goes, you immediately shout fish on so that everybody can hear and they know that you've done it. Otherwise, like I said before, do you remember I was saying a second ago about you leave it 30 seconds or a minute and then um, you suddenly say, oh, fish on. Well, that doesn't work. So you're just gonna have to play by the rules and take it out as soon as the whistle goes. And there you go, there's the final whistle. So as I said, pull out straight away. If you've got a fish on, as I said also, you can uh, play that for a few minutes till you get it in, and that's the end of the match. So what's going to happen now is that we're all going to start packing up, uh, and about probably halfway through packing up, three quarters of the way through, uh, usually someone will be along with the scales. Um, if it's a club match, it'll probably be one of the guys in the, uh, the club, usually the, the guy at the end, assisted by the guy next to him. If it's an organised match, an open match, where it's probably the organiser or the owner of the fishery that will come and do the weigh-in. But I'll get back to you in a second once I've put all this stuff away. The scales have turned up. This is the peg next to me because I've just finally managed to get all my tackle sorted out. They're just zeroing the scales now. I'm waiting for the, the guy on this peg to bring his fish to them. Zero. Okay. So you pour your fish into the, the net. As you can see, a lot less far to go if you pull that third ring through. That's it. Done. Are you going to give And then one guy holds the scales and you get at least one witness normally. 7.34? That's 7 kilos 34, so it's about 15, 16 pounds. So, I'm actually the next pig. So, nice and gentle. Oh, you beat your beat. There's there a roach in there as well. <laughs> okay, that's all that we've got. Can someone grab the other, grab the other handle? Oh, well, he's got nine. 964, yeah. I got okay. Nine. I don't think I've got eight. Well, we've done the most of the way in now. Um, the guys up at that end of the pond didn't do too well. So really, from my perspective, looks like I've just got Richard here to beat. I'll see what he's got. I know he's got a few fish. He's somewhere probably close to me. This is going to be definitely close. 
good afternoon, especially for something. Oh, no, he's done it. He's beaten me. 10 kilos, 86. Yeah. Sorry, well done, mate. <laughs> so I, I came I second. <laughs> Ever the bride's made. Like, <laughs> so there you go, folks. That's everything you need to know about how to fish a match. Whether it's a club match or an open match, it's all pretty much the same. But bear in mind, I can't cover literally everything. There are some venue-specific rules, uh, especially commercial fisheries will have their own rules. Um, so look them up uh, when you get there. But generally, if you start off with club matches, the guys will keep you on the straight and narrow. So, just from my own perspective, I just managed a, a bridesmaid again, um, came second, but hey, it was all about fishing the day and enjoying myself. Well done Richard for, for beating me, um, and as for you guys, that's it I'm afraid, so if you liked it, click the button, if you want to subscribe, you can do that too, and until the next time, bye for now. <laughs>